Ah, stupid radiation. Curious, isn't it? What the? Mew and bird! As we've learned from our Fallout games and HBO shows, radiation is quite the fickle beast. Annoyingly damaging virtual health bars or burning away skin like there's no tomorrow. Say, I bet the question on your mind is how a little bit of spicy air can hurt you anyhow. How can you talk? Have you come for my soul? There, there, chap, don't you fret. Professor Blue Jay is here to answer all your burning radiation questions. Why don't we head on over to my laboratory? Sorry, to fill you in on all there is to know about radiation and take your soul. Gah! Get him, boys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Tim. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you look great. Oh, this? Why, this lovely makeover was done by the amazingly incredible Cass W. Art. Seriously though, I reached out to Cass about a commission after I saw some of her work online, and she made me not one, but four different Blue Jay drawings that would put any of that junk from Picasso or Monet to shame. Not only did she do all that, but she did it all free of charge, no matter how much I insisted. Cass is some of the best ultra-realism art I've ever seen, and better yet, you can often watch her work on stream. So I'd really appreciate it if you help me pay her back by following her on Twitter, or checking out some of the cool stuff she's got on her website, which I'll link below. Although, I still feel bad that she wouldn't accept any payment, so instead, I donated $500 to one of her favorite charities, Autobahn. Thanks again, Cass. I absolutely love how it turned out. Aww. Quiet, boy! School is in session! Now, to the average Joe, radiation is thought of as a deadly, invisible force that only lurks in isolated places humans avoid, like Chernobyl, Fukushima, or your DMs. So as long as you avoid sites of nuclear disasters, you'll never have to interact with it. Don't be the average Joe, Tim. They're stupid. Radiation is actually very common and around you all the time. Put simply, radiation is the transmission of energy in the form of particles or waves through space or material mediums, and they come in many different varieties. So today, we're going to break down the different types of radiation and scientifically rank them from most to least dangerous by placing them on what scientists call a spectral gradation diagram a tour. Let's begin with radiation of the wiggly variety. Check this out. Looks kind of like a crazy worm, right? Wrong. This is called the electromagnetic spectrum. It shows the range of frequencies and wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, a radiation that gets its name from its oscillating electric and magnetic fields. The faster these waves oscillate, the greater the energy they carry. This spectrum ranges from radio waves at the lowest frequency, all the way up to pop culture's favorite, gamma rays at the highest frequency, which is probably what comes to mind when you think of dangerous radiation. However, most people don't realize that there's actually a much more common type of radiation that is far more dangerous than gamma rays could ever hope to be, visible light. This middle portion of the electromagnetic spectrum with wavelengths ranging from 380 to 700 nanometers is the only portion able to be detected by the cone-shaped cells in your eyes. While this is great for putting the observe and observable universe, there is the horrid possibility that if just the right combination of wavelengths hit your retinas in just the right way, you could find yourself looking at Twitter. Instead of delivering physical damage to the cellular makeup of your body, this type of radiation decided to spec all the way into the psychological damage skill tree. So much so that victims of visible light often experience symptoms such as nihilism, depression, or the sudden desire to worship Elon Musk at a rate of nearly 100%. Because of this, visible light kicks off our tier list <coughs> spectral gradation diagrammator in the S tier for screw God for cursing us with eyes and forsaking us with a world of horrid sights. Down here on this end of the spectrum, we have what is called non-ionizing radiation, including the dreadful visible light. And up here where things start to get crazy is what we call ionizing radiation. This type of radiation has sufficient energy to rip individual electrons from the very atoms of your soft, squishy, pathetic body. This process creates ions, hence the name, and can damage your DNA and potentially cause cellular cancer, dysfunction, or death. Meanwhile, non-ionizing radiation pretty much just generates heat and is relatively harmless from a physical perspective. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna stop, get you all warm and, uh, and cozy. No, and, uh, yeah, you're gonna, oh be all, you're gonna be all toasty feel, like it's a, like it's a sunny day at the beach. Like yeah, you're gonna feel like you're on a little vacation so and, your, and your grandma's like, gonna give you a warm pie. It's gonna feel like, 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 feel like you had a warm pie for the first time. Like, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna feel all warm and, and safe and sound. God, I'm gonna warm you up so fucking much. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ionizing radiation includes the high-frequency end of the electromagnetic spectrum in all types of nuclear radiation, which we'll get to later, and is typically what people think of when they hear the word radiation. <laughs> okay, so I'll just avoid ionizing radiation then. Easy. 
Oh, Tim, you sweet, sweet summer child. You might think life is all sunshine and rainbows with non-ionizing radiation, but oh contraire. While ionizing radiation carries over a billion times more energy than their non-ionizing counterparts, that doesn't mean our lower frequency friends don't have a few tricks up their sleeve. Take radio waves, for example. While this radiation has the longest of wavelengths and is the furthest you can get from ionizing radiation, it also allows for mass broadcasted communication over radio devices. This sounds all good and innocent at first, until Cuban guerrillas organize a clandestine revolution of your cozy little suburban town, S tier for socialist revolutions. Pfft, come on, radio in S tier? That stuff's weak. You ever heard Video Killed the Radio Star? I'm glad you brought that up, Tim. Video, whether of the internet or satellite dish variety, is often transmitted through microwaves due to their ability to travel in a tight beam and penetrate Earth's atmosphere to reach the satellites in orbit. While this brings the beauty of my content or JoJo directly to your phone as you sit on the toilet enjoying the pinnacle of leisure, it is also responsible for Wi-Fi, which exposes us to the internet. Dear God. S tier force, holy shit, that's a lot of hentai. Infrared radiation, while unable to be seen, can be felt in the form of heat. Every object in the universe gives off infrared radiation, with hotter objects emitting more. For example, an iceberg would emit little, but the sun, which makes you feel warm, emits much more. In my YouTube channel, with so much fire content, emits some of the most infrared radiation in the known universe right behind Daniel Craig. So while infrared is useful for things like cooking your food, meteorology, and even art preservation, it can also damage your eyes with prolonged exposure, cause mental breakdowns when the remote doesn't work, and makes you quite the easy hunting target for Predator. S tier for shoulder cannons leave no survivors. Ultraviolet radiation is unique because it's mostly non-ionizing, but also marks the beginning of the ionizing portion of the spectrum. It's separated into UVA, which is long and waltzes through our atmosphere unchallenged, UVB, which is more energetic and has a harder time getting past the border patrol, and UVC, which just really wants to kill you. But it's okay, because the ozone layer is there to absorb it. You know, granted there's no holes or anything. UV is great in small doses for vitamin D, guiding bees to pollinate flowers, and discovering how gross your hotel room is. But high exposure can lead to serious burns, ulcers, cataracts, cancer, death, and at its worst, make you look like you're from Jersey Shore. S tier for she who sells seashells by the seashore while shunning sunscreen shall slowly succumb to the smoldering sun's sweeping slaughter. Was that necessary? What is life without whimsical alliterations, Tim? Sounds like you're just using fancy wordplay to sound smarter than you actually are. How did this get loose? Now listen up, because we've entered the electron-ripping ionizing territory. X-rays are perhaps most famous for their use in medicine to take a peek at the hard parts of your body. <laughs> X-rays, like that cute girl at school you have a crush on, pass through many things as if they're semi-transparent. But it's not as if everything is invisible to them, you're just a loser. A material that has a commonly high atomic density, or a chad if you will, has no problem stopping X-rays or Stacy in their tracks. This means X-ray scans are able to show your bones because they're densely packed with calcium, an element with a relatively high atomic number, meaning more electrons to absorb X-rays compared to the soft parts of your body. <laughs> But doctors aren't the only nerds who find x-rays useful. So too do material scientists and engineers. X-ray diffraction is an experimental process that measures the angles and intensities of diffracted x-ray beams shot at a material to determine its crystalline structure. This process has a very wide range of applications, from verifying the integrity of turbine blades and airplanes, to powder analysis to drug identification. Yep, your suspicions were correct, Chase. <sighs> <laughs> it is definitely mid. While x-rays are relatively safe in the small doses used by doctors and dentists, it is nonetheless ionizing, carcinogenic, and has provided superheroes with the means to violate privacy since 1937. S-tier for Superman knockoffs are always watching. Gamma rays are the most energetic form of light, and it's not even close. All of the previously discussed forms of electromagnetic radiation can be produced from an electron in an excited state, like this little rascal here. Oh boy, I'm excited! Relaxing to its ground state by releasing a photon, aka light or electromagnetic radiation. Gah. Jesus Christ! The energies released in this process are typically around a few electron volts to a hundred or many thousands in the case of x-rays. So for perspective, imagine the energy of setting off a little firecracker. Gamma rays, on the other hand, are produced when an extremely high energy photon is emitted from the excited nucleus of an atom that has undergone nuclear decay and is also trying to achieve a ground state. The amount of energy released in this process is tremendous for an atom, in the ballpark of millions of electron volts. So imagine as you're setting off your firecrackers, you accidentally step on an IED 
Backed by all that energy, gamma rays are the most penetrating form of radiation out there, so much so that it takes a gargantuanly immense garnered allocation of commonly high atomic density material to stop it. Or a gigachad. It requires several inches of lead or a few feet of concrete to stop gamma rays, meaning that pathetic sack of meat you call a body doesn't stand a chance. No matter how much creatine you eat, the ionizing nature of gamma rays means they can kill your cells and cause DNA damage that leads to cancer. Short bursts of high doses can cause acute radiation poisoning, which is so fun that it comes in four stages. You'll experience a whole lot of gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and anorexia. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. I mean, I've been to Taco Bell. Oh, those weren't the stages. Those were all just in the first one, the prodromal stage. But our little gamma ray here is quite the gaslighting girl boss. So next, it attempts to draw you in with a false sense of security in the latent phase, where you start to feel overall improvement and think you actually aren't sick at all. However, just as you begin to feel that rare sensation called happiness, you're then hit with the manifest illness stage. And there's a whole ass table for these symptoms. So just like, throw a dart or something, no matter what, you're not having a fun time. And finally, we have the recovery or death phase. Guess what happens there? Ironically, this pesky cell-killing property is precisely why doctors use gamma rays. While itself a source of cancer, gamma rays can be used in radiotherapy to target cancer cells and destroy them, kinda like how a sleazy mechanic might break parts of your car before charging to fix them. Due to the nature of how they're produced, gamma rays are our first example of nuclear radiation. All nuclear radiation is ionizing, which is actually why a Geiger counter can be used to identify the presence of it, a device most recognizable by the characteristic clicking noise it makes. A Geiger counter is simply a metal tube filled with an inert gas and a positively charged rod in the middle. As radiation enters, it ionizes the gas and sends the ripped off electrons to the charged rod, creating momentary currents that come out as clicks on an attached speaker. Hey honey, I'm home! George! Daddy! Daddy. Haha, <laughs> get in here you little <laughs> rascals! How was your day, sweetheart? Mary? Mary? No! Wake up! Mary, wake up! Mom? Tommy! Janie! No! What sick game is this lord? No! Huh, a little spicy. Outside of gamma rays, alpha, beta, and neutron radiation make up the four types of nuclear radiation. Alpha radiation is when a nucleus ejects an alpha particle, a real heavy boy made up of two protons and two neutrons. You can think of alpha radiation as the weeb of the radioactive world. They're very big and slow, not able to penetrate paper or the surface of your skin. But with their double positive charge, they're also the most ionizing form of radiation. So if they do manage to get through your defenses, they'll go to town on your cells with their subatomic katana. Emitted beta particles, which are just electrons, are weebs that aren't as far gone as alpha particles, as they still found time to touch grass every once in a while, and therefore are less massive. A bit more in shape, they are the second most ionizing, able to penetrate half an inch of your skin, and are stopped with just a thin plate of metal. Neutron radiation is a free neutron, and can be thought of as the hippie radiation type. It's unique in that it's kinda chill, and doesn't ionize anything directly, able to travel thousands of meters in air only to be stopped by hydrogen-rich materials. But just like how how real hippies are pretty harmless themselves, the real danger is how their presence annoys the shit out of everyone around them. So when the neutron is absorbed by a stable atom, it then becomes unstable and leads to the emission of one of the other types of radiation. While nuclear radiation is typically associated with man-made city melting firecrackers, you can actually find it in nature as well. In fact, even bananas contain a trace amount of a radioactive potassium isotope. Doctor, I, I don't understand. What's wrong with my husband? Well, Martha. There's no easy way to say this. Your husband seems to be suffering from radiation poisoning due to ingesting a large amount of potassium-40. In layman's terms, you could say that he is... going bananas. Ah! Uh, dear God! That wasn't funny! Help him! Hey now, don't be a bad apple. What are you talking about? But nuclear radiation, regardless of its contributions to fruit or superheroes, is also responsible for some of the most horrifying and gross diseases and deaths imaginable. S tier for stay away from Soviet engineering. So, how about it, Tim? Feel like a radiation expert? I mean, yeah, I get the science of radiation, but I think the only way I'd fully understand it is if I knew a bunch of obscure, wacky trivia about historical applications of nuclear energy and radiation. 